Hey everyone, let's talk about In Forgotten Sleep. This is the long-awaited debut album by alliteration-based Pennsylvania Power Prog playing Project Lore. They have been performing for several years in the Pennsylvania metal scene, but only recently have they released a full-length album following a string of demos that were released earlier in the decade. They play a heavily folk-influenced style of power prog metal and write as many musical passages as you can cram into an hour-long album. Lore have no shortage of great ideas, and this album is here to show that to us. Lots of songs begin with quiet and mystical folk passages that are accompanied by a whirlwind of different movements that place their hybrid of folk and power metal into these grand and progressive song structures. Even though a large chunk of this album is blisteringly fast and in your face, there are plenty of places where the music slows down. For example, Spectrum has this really quiet verse similar to Entrance to Infinity by Pagan's Mind, but more rooted in folky and earthy melodies than the spacey sounds of Enigmatic Calling. The album begins with Dusk, which introduces the gamut of sounds you'll find here. Lots of fast-paced and technical passages that sit alongside mid-paced and beautiful folk instrumentals. There's also the occasional black metal passage, and it's all encased in this nice and warm production. If you expect the ultra clean productions of bands like DGM or Sunburst, then this may be grating at very first listen, but it actually fits the music great, and it breathes life into these folk passages without taking any power away from these metal instrumentals. Dusk begins with a jaunty folk passage that takes its time building into a beautiful mix of power and folk metal. Later in the track, harsh vocals are introduced and the track takes on a more darker feel, but almost immediately goes back to this jaunty folk metal. This song goes through several passages before returning to a variation on the intro theme at the end. There are tons of memorable and fantastic power prog passages throughout this song, but it all feels very disjointed and can be really hard to make out how they're all related to each other. They sound great in the moment though, and the songs flow perfectly when they're given time to build tension. I just wish that they were able to take all the pieces that make up this song and organize it into something with a more focused and clear direction. The approach here is more akin to throwing lots of ideas and passages into a single song and referencing earlier ones along the way, which is still pretty interesting to be fair. On top of this, it's pretty nice to have them revisit ideas across a single track, especially when it's as long as Dusk is. Unfortunately, when this approach is taken to an extreme, it also derails any tension that might have been built over the song, and makes it feel more like a compilation of really sweet power prog passages, as opposed to a fully fleshed out track with an emotional arc across it. A lot of the songs here follow this same formula. Lore will write a fantastic, beautiful, and fun passage that gets lost in an ocean of other fantastic, beautiful, and fun passages. The next track suffers from this as well, along with the moody and dark Song for the Lost and the first couple minutes or so of Eidolon. Dark Cloud immediately begins with a really fast paced and high energy guitar solo that plays into a really surprising and cool verse. From here it jarringly explodes into a new chorus. Everything is so fast and transient that it's hard to feel any sense of tension here. It's so blisteringly fast across its really short runtime, and it would benefit from a little space to breathe between all these ideas that it's throwing around. I really love the idea used in these verses and want to hear it played out and explored further. The staccato guitar riff combined with the weird and fast drumming is one of the highlights on the album. The chorus here is explosive, which is another album highlight. The choruses here are idiosyncratic, they're huge, and they're lots of fun, especially on this track, along with the moody and threatening song for the lost and the extra folky visions of awakening. They could possibly sit nicely alongside passages from Valley of the Damned era Dragon Force, back when they had more youthful exploration in their music. Thankfully though, this problem of pacing doesn't sit across the whole album. When ideas are given room to breathe, the music is nearly perfect. The ideas in Requiem are given plenty of time to digest, and relying on negative space in the second verse really draws in your attention. The chorus here is huge, and there's lots of interplay between these quiet folk parts and the more aggressive power metal. Visions of Awakening shows the best blending of these two styles, though, where this high-energy power metal section sit alongside Insiferum-style riffs on steroids, along with giving the bass a chance to shine on the verses. The song eventually slows down a bit, but the sections here flow pretty seamlessly. There is a lot of build-up during the instrumental section after the chorus that goes straight into a quickly plucked acoustic guitar section. Idolan suffers a bit in the beginning with sporadic tone changes, but after a couple minutes the track more than redeems itself and it turns into one of the most powerful tracks on the album. It begins with some symphonics a la the short interlude that it follows called Aura. These symphonics then give way to some fast paced and energetic power metal that loses its momentum to a ballady passage. After this section though, the track takes a darker sound. It even goes into a bit of black metal for a bit, and it sounds great. 
There's also a lot of quieter portions in the track that do a lot for it as well. Not only do the ambient synths sound really great, but it gives the song room to breathe and transitions naturally into the passages that bookend it. This darker middle section is very cohesive and shows that if they can achieve the proper song flow, then they're capable of writing some of the best power prog out there. This album is peppered with a couple of well-placed interludes that are imperative for an album such as this one with a monstrous 67 minute runtime. The Force does some light guitar picking and is relatively quiet, and Or is another slow and surprisingly jazzy track that builds with symphonics. It is reminiscent of one of the more orchestral tracks off of Symphony X's The New Mythology Suite. There is little jazz to be found on In Forgotten Sleep, but this track works great with the rest of the album. It also makes a pretty nice transition with the symphonics that begin Eidolon. And finally, the title track closes off the album. It begins with these mystical symphonics that create some of the most vivid imagery on the album. This song is beautiful, and the first few minutes sound like a gorgeous fantasy ballad. It's pretty great, and it provides a relaxing cooldown for the closer. The pieces that make up this track work well together, and even the more upbeat chorus and solo has an almost relaxed quality to it. It's not too in your face, and it's not too blisteringly fast, and it works well with the slow and beautiful passages that surround it. The song does build in intensity near the end, though, but in a way that feels like a very dramatic conclusion as opposed to building more tension. Overall, my feelings for this album are pretty positive and also extremely weird. I wanted to love this album way more than I did. All of the pieces that constitute lore are some of my favorite aspects of metal, from the gorgeous symphonics to the intense and fun power metal passages. I have to give them serious credit, though, for not sending me into a fit of impatient rage across an almost 70 minute long album. Even though the pieces can be extremely disjointed and awkward, I never get bored except for maybe the end stretch of Spectrum or the spare outro that goes on for a bit too long. The album succeeds in many facets despite their lack of direction inside the songwriting. The sound is a very unique blend of folk and power prog, taking lots of great aspects from both of these genres. From a moment-by-moment -moment basis, the riffs are not only extremely catchy, but they're also super memorable and fun. Even after the first listen, there are lots of passages and riffs and orchestral parts that get stuck in your head and refuse to leave. And there's definitely something to be said for that. If Lore can get in touch with their songwriting chops, then they will be a formidable group that has the potential to write some of the best power prog of the decade. So I suppose overall, this album is a success, and definitely a phenomenal first addition by Lore into the power prog sphere. What did you think of this album? I would love to know your thoughts about this album, whether you were into it or didn't care for it or whatever. Thanks for listening, everyone. Tune in next week for a review of trying to use a bendy straw that has a small hole in the side. I'll see you guys next time.